everyone and a very warm welcome to our service of morning worship from Christchurch Bitteriki on Sunday the 12th of February. Today is the second Sunday before Lent. Lent is zooming up. It seems like Christmas has only just gone doesn't it? And that leads me on to tell you that the Lent course this year has now been planned um, it's going to be called Dust and Glory and um, it's based on the um, uh, book uh, Dust and Glory, A Lent Journey of Faith, Failure and Forgiveness which was written by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, Bishop Emma Inison has co-written the Daily Reflection booklets which will be available next week. They're £1.50 each and um, we can um, either bring those to you if you phone the church office or you can pick them up from any of the team churches. They will begin, the course will begin on the 1st of March. It will be at 7.30 p.m. and will be at one of the team churches. It will rotate each week between Emmanuel, Christ Church and St John the Divine. We've um, had to choose those three churches and not St Mary the Virgin because um, we need the projection facilities and St Mary's haven't got, haven't got projection facilities. Um, also, we've got um, the real Easter eggs available now. They're fair trade um, Easter eggs and inside is a, a booklet uh, telling the Easter story for children. You can't buy these eggs in supermarkets. They are only available from the Meaningful Chocolate Company. So if you would like one uh, or you would like one delivered or more delivered to you, uh, just call the church office and we'll make arrangements to bring them to you. They're £4.50 each. We have a new um, a mission partner for CMS, the Church Mission Society. Our previous mission partner who was based in Turkey has now moved on and we have um, selected a young man called Aaron Stanbury um, and he will be based in Kenya working with um, children aged 7 to 10 years old in the Nairobi Westland slum settlements. Obviously Christchurch has got a very strong link with Kenya and so the mission support group thought that the choice of Aaron was one that was very close to our hearts 
and so we're delighted to welcome Aaron and hopefully he'll be coming to Christchurch in the next couple of months so that we can meet him and ask him some questions if you like about what he's doing. I think that's all the notices. This morning um, Catherine will be preaching, uh, Marion Grant's doing the Bible reading and John Friend will be leading our prayers. So shall we just take a moment to be quiet and we can begin our service. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our confession. Is there something you want to bring before the Lord this morning to say you're sorry? Something you said, something you did, something you left undone maybe. Let's take another moment to be quiet and see what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Lord God, <clears throat> we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, going through to chapter 2, verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water, so God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seeds in it, according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky, to separate the day from the night. 
and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because it, on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25 to the end. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendour, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows 
that you need them. But first seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. As I read through the passage from St Matthew's Gospel, a trio of songs, is that a triple earworm, played in my mind. And each one illustrates the wrong way of reading and understanding Christ's teaching here. Firstly, Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Now on a bright spring morning, as I'm coming up to the church, it's very easy to listen to this and agree with it. Whatever has gone wrong or is going wrong, just sing along. However, I'm not sure that telling the people of Turkey and Syria, don't worry, be happy, would be the best thing I or any one of us could do. Then there's, don't you worry about a thing, because every little thing's going to be all right. Again, a song that can have you singing along, even attempting to whistle along with the birds, feeling at that moment that you can take on anything. But I am absolutely convinced that this is the last piece of advice the people of Ukraine need to hear. The problem with passages like this one is that it is all too easy to concentrate on the don't worry, to such an extent that anyone feeling even the slightest bit down hears at best only a trite sentiment, pure cant, or at worst, that they are excluded from this supposedly good news and happy clappy message. And the message can also be completely misunderstood and misinterpreted by those in authority. I've heard talks on not worrying, but have extended this concept to not having any concern at all for the world we live in, the planet we live on. If we're not supposed to worry, then why bother to recycle, to reduce the use of plastic, to conserve fishing stock, to bother about smoke pollution? Indeed, why bother about the wars and rumours of wars? We're not supposed to worry. And in any case, God didn't, put, didn't God put us on the earth to subdue it, to use it and exploit it? Of course, we instinctively know some of the truth in Jesus' words. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? We realise that worrying does us no good. In fact, with our growing understanding of mental health, we know that worrying is far more likely to shorten life or seriously incapacitate the individual. The number of people of all ages with what are described as anxiety-related conditions is growing. I said I had a triple earworm. The third song is older and suggests that those who sing it should pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Just about the worst thing you can do. A stiff upper lip and a forced smile. But again... The song's observation that, what's the use of worrying, it never was worthwhile, goes right back to Jesus' perceptive comment. Worrying won't add time to our lives or inches to our height. Worrying won't help the people of Turkey or Syria or the Ukraine or Russia or the many areas of the world where there is war, fear, injustice or oppression. But the words of Jesus are there for a reason. He wasn't telling those around him to just be happy or to smile regardless. He was saying 
that our lives should be centred on God and that those who followed him should be living as people whose lives are centred on God. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So what if those who heard the message and those who hear it now genuinely sought the kingdom of God and his righteousness? The Lord's Prayer is a good place to start. It comes earlier in Matthew's Gospel and we'll join in praying it later on. But your kingdom come, your will be done. We ask for our daily bread individually and collectively. That is, enough for today, enough for us all. We ask for forgiveness as we forgive. And if we are serious about the kingdom, we know what the kingdom is like. We have examples of this from Jesus' life and we have his own declaration at the beginning of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we all sought the kingdom, we wouldn't be worrying. We would be putting the kingdom into practice. And all these things would indeed come nearer. People in Turkey and Syria would not have to ask for help. Syria would not have fallen off the world's radar. Attempts would be made to deal with the situation there and Syrian refugees in Turkey would not now have left a civil war only to be caught up in disaster. In God's kingdom, no country would be invading another. So Ukraine would not be trying to avert disaster. And the earth, God's gift to us, would be cherished, cared for and used to the advantage of all. So no, worrying does no good, so we shouldn't worry. Seeking God's kingdom is what we should be about, which means not only removing worry for ourselves, but in showing others that we care that they can join us, that they too need not worry. Then, indeed, we can be happy, because God is our creator and our father, because when he made the earth, it was good, even very good, and it can and will be again if we seek God's kingdom, as that kingdom comes. And our next worship song speaks of having that real faith in God, a faith that is not just in the morning as a new day dawns, but one that stays and grows, so that whatever lies before us, we can and we will be praising God, living in him and with him, even when the evening comes. We listen to, or join in with, Bless the Lord, all my soul, 10,000 reasons. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning 
It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes so bless the Lord Thank you very much, Catherine, for your sermon this morning. As always, it's very insightful and it made us think. I love that song too, the Graham Kendrick band singing 10,000 reasons. We all have thousands of reasons to thank God. Is there just one that's on your heart this morning? As you look back over the week, do you have just one reason, one 
thing to thank God for. Just hold that in your heart. We're now going to affirm our faith in the God of 10,000 reasons. So if you would like to, please stand. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now John Friend is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us begin our prayers by praying for those affected by the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. It is difficult to comprehend how, in a few moments, life has changed forever for so many. Homes, hospitals and shops have collapsed. Family members and friends have been killed and injured. Jobs for some no longer exist. Supplies of food and water are scarce. While people are trying to sleep under the stars in the cold of winter, they are hearing cries from those trapped underneath the rubble. Having only basic tools, they feel helpless as there is nothing they can do. Our Father, we pray you will give those who are able to provide help in this volatile region patience, diplomatic skills and the means to provide promptly supplies and ongoing assistance to enable a more normal life to be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We heard in our reading how God made the world and provided for all life on earth. Let us give thanks for what we have. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food each day. Some remain hungry as they do not have food each day. Thank you for the clean water piped into our houses. Some do not have access to clean water. Thank you that we have a home to return to every day. Some do not know where they will spend the next night. Thank you that we live in a peaceful country. Some have never lived without the fear of war or violence. Thank you that we live in a largely law-abiding country. Some have only experienced the opposite. Thank you we are able to choose to worship you while wearing whatever we like. Some have religion thrust upon them. Thank you, Lord, for providing for our needs and help us not to be dissatisfied for not having more of what we would like. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Recently, the media have quoted the results of research that conclude a smaller percentage of the population than ever before now follow Christian beliefs. Lord, we pray you will help those in authority to look for and inspire new spiritual leaders who will find fresh ways to reinvigorate the church and attract a new wave of people to join us in worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are currently experiencing the depressing and distressing ongoing effects caused 
by widespread strikes by a number of disparate groups of workers. While we each may have our own opinion about what should be done to resolve these issues, none of us truly know the full facts or the possible outcomes. Our Father, we pray for your guiding hand to be with all those responsible for the end results, in the knowledge that they will be fair and equitable to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us turn our thoughts and prayers to those who are sick in any way, to those named on our notice sheet, and those known only to us. We think also of those who are recently bereaved, and for those for whom bereavement was not experienced recently, but nevertheless is still fresh and raw in the mind. There will now be a short time of quiet, so we may each say our own prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Finally, prior to the time of this recording, the Church of England, General Synod, has been debating a motion whether marriage is between a man and a woman. The latest results are 122 for and 256 against. This decision indicates that the majority of bishops and clergy in General Synod do not support the view of marriage that is currently part of the core beliefs of the Church. Father, we ask that all delegates will pray earnestly for your guidance and be bestowed with your wisdom to reach a decision which pleases you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Collect for the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For it is with grace that we 
song of your salvation to win this generation for our King. Song of your forgiveness, for it is with grace that river flows. Take us to the river in the city of our Take us to the throne room in the city of our God. Take us to the throne room in the city of our God. And take us to the mountain. Take us to the mountain in the city of our That's a lovely picture, isn't it? Taking us to the river, the Spirit of God being led to the river and uh, just flowing along in God's Spirit. Well, we're almost at the end of our service this morning. Um, thank you for being with us. We always enjoy putting these services together for you. Don't forget, if you would like um, the uh, book for Lent, it's £1.50 and uh, you can just phone the office and someone will deliver one or two or whatever you need to you. And um, if you want any of the Meaningful Chocolate Company Easter eggs at £4.50, uh, we will also be happy to bring them out to you. So I do hope that whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, you have a lovely Sunday afternoon and I hope that you have a blessed and peaceful week. And here now are the closing prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>